I thought I'd jump straight in there with the tutorial. So I have a lot of dead stock and old fabrics from my previous fashion brand and it's such a shame because I never make anything from them. So I've decided to make some flares today with my chosen fabric. So I've chosen my thread and now I'm just threading up my overlocker machine. If you don't have an overlocker, you can use a normal sewing machine as well. So I've had to take out my cutting mat, but you can see it's really wobbly and bent from how I stored it, but hopefully that will straighten out. And I'm using patterns that I made literally years ago. It's amazing how you can use patterns that are even this battered. Um, so the fabric I chose is this black thick ribbed fabric, which is really perfect for bell bottom flares. And I fold the fabric in a quarter of the way because you need um, four quarters, two quarters for each leg. So fold it in, make sure, making sure the stretchy side is the width side. If you do the stretch the wrong direction, if you did it lengthwise, then your flares would be really like long hanging and also you wouldn't really be able to wear them because you need that width, uh, that stretch in the width of the leg, basically. So I'm just pinning the pattern and just be careful not to stretch the fabric when you're doing this. You can see I'm kind of dragging the fabric along before I use the rotary cutter, but I made sure it was really, really pinned and I actually did that quite carefully, even though it doesn't look like I did. Um, so the rotary cutter I'm using is a fabric one, you can get them off eBay. This one's obviously blunt, which is why I'm really going hard with it. My neighbour bought me some plantain, so I had a quick break. It's very sweet of her. So as you can see, I've cut both legs and now I am removing the pins of the final one and I make sure that I don't get anything mixed up. So I leave them in their piles on the side with their paper patterns. I realized I had some fabric left, so I was experimenting and just seeing which one of my patterns that I have in store that I can use for that fabric, but they were all too big. So I've decided to show you a different technique, which you can also use for the flares, by the way. So I got this little crop top of mine and I'm using some very old pattern paper but it will do the trick. And I'm just tracing this top. To be honest with you, this top is, top is pretty much a rectangle, but I thought I may as well just trace the top anyway. So I'm just measuring it, to be honest. I'm just measuring so that it's all equal all the way around. I'm not doing a half pattern where you um, fold it in the middle. I'm just doing the full pattern on one sheet and I'm now just straightening it out completely. But yes, like I said, it's pretty much a rectangle. So the way you can do this with the flare pattern is you can find an old pair of leggings and you can literally trace that onto paper in the same way that I'm doing. Um, and then at the knee section, you just um, do a straight line coming from the knee to the bottom of the leg, kind of fanned out in a flare shape. So that will work as well if you don't have a pattern or if you don't have experience in pattern making, you can do that for the flares and you can do that for the top. So I'm still measuring the top over here and just doing little marks along and then I'm gonna draw a straight line and then I'm gonna cut that out. Oh, also after tracing the top, I added a seam allowance of one centimeter on either side because you need to take into account the stretch, but actually I should have added two centimeters on either side because it, the top was actually a bit small in the end. Um, I just cut out the fabric so that I could rotary cut it easier. So I actually used scissors first and then I used the rotary cutter to cut it accurately. Now I'm taking out the pins and all of the pieces are now ready to sew. I'm using my overlocker to start off with. If you do not have an overlocker, you can actually just use a normal sewing machine and use a zigzag stitch. So when I'm using my overlocker, especially as I just changed the threads, I always use a test piece of fabric. So I'm just testing it over here. Okay, so once the test piece is done, I then start on the legs. So what I do is I start with the inner kind of crotch area of either side. So I sew the two front sides together and then I sew the two back sides together. I do that so that nothing gets confused. I know that the front is for the front and the back is for the back back. Basically, when I'm sewing it through the sewing machine, I make sure that I don't stretch the fabric at all. I just kind of gently curve it as I'm sewing along the kind of curve in the crotch area. And yeah, just be careful not to stretch anything. And once that's done, I decide to sew the front and the back together and I start with the outer leg of either side. So I sew almost till the bottom of the flares, just making sure I don't stretch anything. And then I get to a point where I've decided I want some a slit at the bottom of the leggings. 
So once I've decided on that point, I continue to sew until I reach that point and then I pull the leggings out when, once I've reached that and then I just tug on the overlocker thread a little bit just to make sure that the thread doesn't unravel and um, if you have a domestic machine then you just do it normally as you would with a domestic machine. So anyway, next up I start with the inner crotch area of the thread. And I do this so that the seams in the front and the back crotch area match up well. It's much easier to fix any mistakes at the bottom of the flares rather than in the crotch area. So make sure that the crotch is the perfect part. So I sewed up the top, as I mentioned earlier, the top was a little bit too small. So I actually made a wider one for me so that I could wear this because I actually really like the design. Also, I wear noise blocking headphones when I'm sewing because I actually damaged my ears from all my sewing back in the day. Next up, I add the waistband elastic. So my waist is around 25, 26 inches, but I, um, as they're high-waisted leggings, I make them a bit smaller, so I went for about 25 inches. I'd advise you maybe wrapping the elastic around you to know your measurements, or just use the waist measurement you wear for jeans, because once you sew the elastic together, which I'm doing now, it kind of takes away some of the width, which is actually good, so that it's not too big or loose, because elastic is stretchy. Now I'm going to try and explain this as good as I can, but I use the join of the elastic and I line that up with the back of the leggings so that all of kind of the messy stuff is towards the back. I then cut notches a quarter of the way along the waistband. So you literally just fold it into quarters and cut little notches. You can use a pen if you don't want to cut your elastic. So once I've measured the notches, that's when I know what notch goes with what seam on the top of the leggings. There are four notches on the elastic and there are four seams on the top of the leggings. One in the back middle, two, two on either side, well one on either side, and then one on the front. So that's four seams. So each notch is matched up with each seam. So as you can see, I'm sewing and then when a notch kind of reaches one of the seams, I really just pop, as you can see, I can, I'm stretching it in place to match up with the seam. So it's fine if the elastic is stretched because then that creates an even Kind of level of fabric and elastic ratio if you match up the notches to the seams. I hope that made sense but I do think you'll find it easier when you actually are doing it and I suggest if you don't have an overlocker to just use a zigzag um, stitch for this on a normal domestic machine. So once I've done that I've kind of gone all the way around and sewn the elastic to the top of the waistband then I can go ahead and fold the um, elastic in kind of conceal that in so I'm folding that in I used to make this design for my business and when I did I used to use a twin needle on this sewing machine um, just to make it have that extra professional finish but I've realized that actually a zigzag stitch works just fine so I'm zigzag stitching the waistband where basically I kind of go maybe half a centimeter into where the end of the elastic is just so that that's really held in place and um, as you can see it looks really really neat because the elastic is concealed in there and for the top I was extra lazy and literally just folded in one centimeter in and just sewed that all the way along the top of the top with a zigzag stitch and I'm leaving a raw edge at the bottom. So I'm just cutting off any of those little threads. But yes, it's a raw edge crop top with a raw edge kind of grungy style slash leg flares. So here I've got my mini cutting board out because some of the, just there's some excess fabric at the bottom of the leg, like some of the seams didn't match up perfectly. But this is such an easy fix. You just use a ruler and a rotary cutter and you just roll it in that straight line with the rotary cutter and you're done and this is the final result. I hope you liked this tutorial guys and if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe on the small channel so I really appreciate all of your help and please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you tried this out yourself. As usual sending you love, light and good vibes and see you at my next video.